what is the difference between a parrot lat and a green cheek conure? Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I have 22 species of parrots. I love parrots, parrots are my bliss. If you are used to hanging out and you're already subscribed, you've probably already set your preferences on YouTube so that YouTube lets you know when the next video is published, usually the next day. So what's the difference between a green cheek and a parrot lat? Let's get started. So like I said, if you're used to hanging out, thank you for being here. If not, let's talk about parrotlets and green cheeks. I have pretty good experience with both kinds. I've even done some light breeding with both kinds. So I think I can give you some good insights. First of all, this is a disappearing green cheek. It's a very special color mutation or coloring, right? Oh, good, she reappeared. Now, my parrotlet, Mr. Harris, I'm gonna have to show him to you in his room because the thing is, the last time I brought him out here, he flew up to the palm tree. Nothing wrong with that, but then he won't be in the video. And the macaws are getting ready to come out here, and so um, I can't have a little parrotlet with the macaws. That could be trouble. So I have to leave this space clear, and I don't wanna have to try to talk Mr. Harris into coming back into his room when the macaws are on their way out. So we'll see Mr. Harris in a minute. When it comes to uh, green cheek conures and parrotlets, there are several similarities as far as the following things go. They are both, I'm gonna say, basically economical. You're gonna be paying, I think on the low end, $100 for a parrotlet, maybe 150. On the high end, you might be paying 400, 500 for a parrotlet. A green cheek conure, I think that on the low end, you're gonna be paying two, $300. And on the high end, you're gonna be, no, River, don't eat my earring, please. Nope, let go. Uh-uh, that's a good girl, thank you. And on the high end, mwah, you're gonna be, um, you, well, you could pay, depending, well, for a green cheek, I'm gonna say you could pay, I've seen as much as 1600 like for a beautiful sun cheek factor or sun cheek coloring and that's a new color mutation or a new color variety if you will of green cheek that is becoming a little more available but the point is you can get a green cheek conure for a couple hundred dollars the next thing about both is that in the case of both hi sweetie hi baby uh you can really get them in a variety of colors so this here river she is a cinnamon she has a little red but she's not really a red factor and she's not yellow so i don't believe she counts as a pineapple i think she would count mostly as a cinnamon the truth is green cheeks kind of come in so many colors now that it's a little confusing and um i'm gonna say that off the top of my head i don't think parrotlets come in as many color mutations or varieties but they do come in a lot of varieties. Hi, sweetie, how are you? River is very sweet. She really likes people. You could see that. She's just being a sweetheart. Um, and that's one thing about green cheeks. Conyers are very uh, bonded parrots. They are parrots that really are going to have a strong bond with their mate. And it's a visible bond. It's a bond where they're preening each other, they're cuddling up next to each other. Look at her, she, you know, she's doing exactly that. Parrotlets aren't going to be as affectionate. Do I think parrotlets can be affectionate, are affectionate? Yes. Do I think a parrotlet's gonna let you pet them? Yes. Do I think a green cheek is more so? Yes. Another similarity with both of these species is that uh, in both cases, I, would never get just one. I really would get two. If you don't want them to breed, then you get the same gender. Why would I always get two? Because these are both very social species and citizens or parrots are very social family of animals. 
so that unless you are with your bird like almost all day long, it can be hard on a parrot to be in their cage by themselves or even in their house by themselves while you're at work or you're at school or whatever it is you're doing during the day. Generally speaking, us humans, we've got other things going on and we aren't able to spend all of our time with our bird. And our birds are used to being like this with their buddies and their flock pretty much all day long. Now, the truth is they might only like touch and be in proximity with uh, their one mate, but they are used to having that flock. They are used to having a mate that's the way they're made. And so they are gonna have a harder time if it's just them. Do you wanna go back on my shoulder? Is that okay? Oh, stretch, stretch. That's a good girl. You're such a good bird. So um, that that's another similarity. I, I just, people, I think are starting to realize that when they just have one, their bird can get lonely and it's really nice for their bird to have company. And so I think that people are tending to get two more and more and I think that's just wonderful. Um, but that's a similarity. Some differences, like I said, the green cheek conure is gonna be more expensive and they are going to, of course, need a larger cage. You just want pets, huh? Uh, they're gonna eat more food. You are talking about uh, double the size. In other words, on average, a parrotlet is gonna be about 30 grams and a couple inches, and a green cheek conure, there you go, sweetie, is gonna be around 60 to 70 grams, sort of depending. And because of their parakeet tail, which really means long, they're gonna be a little bigger, but they're basically double the size of a parrotlet. Now, because of that tail though, a green cheek conure, you could say that they are gonna need a cage that's twice as big, but the, the tail's gonna add some. So while you always wanna give your parrot as much space as you can kind of thing, the cage size is gonna be a little different. In other, different. In other words, a parrotlet is going to suit a lifestyle that's smaller. If you have a really small apartment or let's say you are gonna be keeping your parrot just in your room or something like that. You know, a parrotlet, you know, they are half the size. I think that's something to really keep in mind. If money is an issue at all, things like the vet bills are gonna be the same, but the food's gonna be a little different because in theory, this bird should eat twice as much. They are both gonna be birds that need some fresh vegetables every day, that need a pelleted diet, and that seasonally should have some seeds. Some of the best seeds to give them are gonna be the parakeet mixes because my vet says that they don't have the sunflower seeds which tend to give the parrot the opportunity to eat like a lot of fat but not necessarily gain the nutrition, at which point your par sorry, your um, green cheek conure or your parrotlet might gain a little too much weight and so that wouldn't be so healthy. So seasonally you can give them some seeds that aren't as high in fat and maybe just use your sunflower seeds as uh, training or as treats. But basically, otherwise, they are gonna have kind of the same core diet, the vegetables, the pellets, and some seasonal seeds. And so, again, you know, I mean, neither of these birds is gonna eat you out of house and home kind of thing. I mean, they might chew on your wood, but as far as paying for them, it's not like my macaws. My macaws have a nut budget because nuts are expensive. So these guys aren't gonna be all that expensive, but the green cheek should be twice as much food cost as the um, parrotlet. And in a way the cage should be more expensive because it should be a larger cage. Now let's look at some of their temperament, biting, sound, those kinds of things. When it comes to the temperament, these species I'm gonna say are very similar, same with biting and sound because basically um, they can both be very friendly, especially if you spend time with them. They can bond with you for sure, even if you have two of them. They do tend to be bitey, both species when they're young. That can really happen. So that's something that you wanna kinda keep in mind. When they get a little older and they're no longer really young, they're not so bad. River, for example, she's supposed to be about a year old and 
she doesn't, sometimes she nibbles, but she doesn't bite. She's really rather sweet and fantastic. The same is true with parlettes. They're, they can be bitey. Um, I've had some that are really bitey and I've had some that aren't, but by the time they're a year, year and a half, two, the biting really seems to decrease. Now, eating earrings doesn't change any. I'm sorry, sweetie, you can't eat my earring. But um, that wouldn't be healthy, but <laughs> at all. But um, it really gets better, so I don't think it's a, a big, huge deal. Sound-wise, these are both birds that aren't that bad. If your lifestyle is such that you kind of need a quiet bird, maybe you are in an apartment or a townhome, and you have neighbors that you need to consider. You're, I don't, I just, I don't even know if you, I don't think your neighbors are even gonna know that you have a bird at home with either of them. So they're kind of easy as far as all of that goes. Talking ability. Out of these two species, the males are more likely to talk than the females, but with the green cheek conures, I think you're more likely to number one, get talking, or number two, get talking that you can understand. Let's see if she'll, say, hi, baby, the way she was trained. Hi, sweetie, hi, baby. River, you wanna say hi, baby? Hi, baby. Oh, you see a lizard. Hi, baby. Hi, baby. Hi, baby. Can you say hi, baby? Baby. 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 All right, not right now. I was hoping she would say it so you could kind of hear it. But green cheeks, I think they're more likely to pick up some words for you. When we spend time with our green cheeks, they do pick up a word or two, but we're not huge on trying to teach them. And if you want to teach your parrot to talk, you're going to have to parrot whatever you want them to say by saying it over and over and over and over, etc. You get You get the idea. All right, some more pros and cons. Um, like I was saying, I do feel like you can have two of each of a parrotlet or a green cheek conure and they will still bond with you if you're spending time with them. And if you're not spending time with them, they might as well have a friend. The green cheeks, you know, I'm, I'm really pleasantly surprised. We have um, a pair that breeds and they still adore us, not only us, but I have a friend that comes to visit every now and then and they adore her even though they don't see her that often. So green cheeks are just like these loving, going to bond with you, just attached at the cheek is what I call it because you could call it at the hip, but they're just always cuddling up. And so I'm gonna say that for sure, a green cheek conure is gonna be, I think a little more affectionate and a little more bonded and um, a little more loving in those ways for you than a parrotlet, if that's something that's big for you and something that you want to keep in mind. Now, assuming that you take really good care of both and that you give them both a really good diet, of course, the green cheek is going to live a little longer. They can live, mm, you know, in captivity. I've heard different things, but you know, 25 years, something like that. Whereas with the parrotlet, um, I've heard of them living 16, 20 years, that kind of thing. So the green cheek does live a little longer. Um, it's kind of like the more you pay, the longer the bird lives, not really, but you know. In other words, it is something to sort of keep in mind. The parrotlet is a little less of everything, a little less expensive, a little less food, a little smaller cage. Um, a little lo shorter lifespan. The green cheek is a little bigger on all of those when you're like really trying to compare and see what the two are like. Let's see what else. Um, the green cheek, I feel, is more tuned into me, more interested in me. My parrot lets, they like me. I had one that just adored me. She always wanted to be on me. I loved her to death. But generally speaking, I find that it's more common for the green cheeks to want to be with me, uh, want to bond with me, that kind of thing. And it's not that the parrotlets don't want to, it's that I feel like this species is more interested in people. The parrotlets are, they're a little more Napoleon, like I'm gonna go conquer the world, I'm gonna do what I wanna do, I love you, don't get me wrong, but I've got this going on over here. 
And it's not that the green cheek doesn't have its own thing going on, although it could, and it could easily become a needy parrot. Same can be true for a parrotlet as well, if it doesn't have enough companionship. So that's something to keep in mind. In some ways, you could say that a green cheek needs more time and attention. And I'm a little hesitant to say that because they both, like any parrot really needs time and attention. But in other words, the green cheek, you know, I feel like they're more interested. That, see what I'm saying? <laughs> I hope. All right, now, um, I hope I've painted a pretty good picture. They're both gonna be very similar in a lot of ways. And they're, you know, they're both apartment parrots. A lot of similarities. I think I've given you a good idea of some of the differences. Now, um, I am going to say, if I had to choose, obviously I would have both because I have both. And I really like both of these species. If I only could choose one, I think I would have to look to lifestyle and kind of see like what my circumstances are to see what suits me better. But even that doesn't exactly help me decide because um, they both would work in an apartment unless it's like a really small apartment and I felt like the green cheek wasn't gonna have enough room for some reason or the green cheeks because I would have two. But ultimately, if I could only have one, either parrotlet or green cheek, I think that I would go with a pair of green cheek conures because if I have two, I know that if I need to go and take care of my human things, I can do that and they are keeping each other company. But I kind of feel like when they have time for me, they're more interested in me and it makes it easier for me to connect with them. I feel like um, you, you can get a sense like, no, don't eat my shirt. No, no, don't eat my shirt, please. You can get a sense that the river's really happy being with me. She's like checking things out. She doesn't mind that we're outside. She's already used to being out back here um, because she's come out several times. And I like that. Now she's biting me. Don't, no bites, please. No bites or I'll kiss you. No bites or I'll kiss you. Mm-hmm. So I like that. I will also say that at double the size and maybe a little longer with that when you take the tail into consideration and now she has lipstick on her beak, um, she's also a little easier to engage with in a way, I think when it comes to parrots and sweetheart you can't eat my earring i'm sorry that could be very bad for you um when it comes to parrots the bigger the parrot in a way the more personable they are that's a generalization but there's something to that so that in some ways it's a little easier to connect with them and therefore it you know it kind of makes a difference and so for that reason, I think I would go for the green cheek, but man, I really like both these species. Basically, I don't think you can go wrong. If you wind up getting four, two and two, I think you're gonna be on cloud nine. And unless you have like, you're only letting them free fly in a bathroom or something. And even there, if the bathroom's big enough, I don't think it's gonna be a problem. But if you're letting the four of them free fly in your home, I don't think you're gonna have problems where they're fighting and hurting each other or anything like that. One really wonderful thing, generally speaking, about parrots is when they're supervised to make sure that there aren't any problems, because you still can have problems, um, is when they have enough space and they can fly and get away when they feel unsafe, then you can have different species in the same space because they can fly and get away. Not the same cage, but a same common space like in your living room or in your home. Now this little girl, that's really sweet. She stepped down to go to the bathroom. Unfortunately, she still got it on my jeans. Very nice of her not to get it on my shoulder. All right, now I'm going to try to make sure and insert some pictures. I'll go take some video footage right now of um, Mr. Harris so that you see my very handsome cinnamon parrotlet who I adore. Very cute. You know, you just can't go wrong. You can almost flip a coin and like just go with two of each species, each one of the species and I think you're gonna be thrilled. Thank you for joining me in this blissful video. If you have any questions about parrots, please be sure to comment below. I love parrots, I love talking about parrots. Um, and, I, and, and therefore, I want your parrot to be happy and in love with you because happy parrots might make for a better world, right? Let's try it. Thanks, I'll see you next time.